This time, we will call the meeting to order for the Board of Adjustments and Appeals for uh, March 28, 2018. Would you please join me as we pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May we have roll call, please? Chairman Taylor? Here. Vice Chairman Shahab? Here. Member Hunley? Member Johnson? Alternate Member S William Kilpatrick? Here. Alternate Member Smith Rodriguez? Here. Okay, we do have four members in attendance, and that does present a quorum. Um, first up is the approval of the minutes for February 28th. 2018. Did anyone notice any additions or corrections that need to be made? No. No? no? Okay. Uh, may I have a motion then? Motion to approve the minutes. Seconded. All right. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Very well. Okay. Uh, okay. All persons who anticipate speaking on any public hearing item must fill out an oath card to be heard on that agenda item and sign the card contained thereon. These cards are located on the table at the rear of the chamber council, cha council chamber or may be obtained from the recording secretary. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the regulations adopted in resolution 24-1997. Those speaking in favor of a request will be heard first those opposed will be heard second, and those who wish to make a public comment on an item will either will speak third. The applicant may make a brief rebuttal if necessary. A representative from either side, for or against, may cross-examine a witness. Anyone who speaks is considered a witness. If you have photographs, sketches, or documents that you desire the commission to consider, they must be submitted into evidence and will be retained by the city. Please submit such exhibits to the recording secretary. Um, first thing, uh, have all the items been properly advertised tonight, staff? Yes, they have. Thank you. Are there any members present that have had individual conversations or visited the sites in question for tonight? None. No, no special visits, all right. No <laughs> Uh, we ride by a lot of these places, but no special visits. Very well. Okay. Uh, well, we're at a council. We're at a point where we're last time meeting where we only have four members in presence. Um, so I guess it's up to the applicant as to whether we can continue or not for each individual item. Is that correct? Yes, that is the case. And for the public listening and the applicant in the audience, I will again read the rule from your bylaws, which states that an affirmative vote of four members shall be required to pass on any matter, except that an affirmative vote of three members shall suffice to pass on a motion to deny a request for a variance. Very well. Um uh, I'll repeat that since there's new newcomers coming into the audience. Um, the city has a policy in the bylaws which state that the quorum is a minimum of four members that must be present to conduct business. We have four members here today. This is a board of five. There is not a fifth member present at this time. I've been told that member Hunley is on her way. However, she will be late. She's not here right now. And the next item on their agenda will be determined by the four persons present. The bylaws state that an affirmative vote of four members shall be required to pass on any matter except that an affirmative vote of three members shall suffice to pass on a motion to deny a request for a variance. And with that being stated and only four out of five members present, it is the applicant's opportunity to decide if they wish to continue the item or have it heard tonight with the four members present. So we will ask at the beginning of each item whether they wish to continue. 
Uh, the first item, we have no consent agenda. The first item up for old business is variance number 2002-2018 two uh, for 1517 Elm Terrace. Do we have the applicant online or is she just listening in? Oh, oh, you're here. I'm sorry, you're here. You drove in, all right. Well, again, we get to ask you the same question we asked you last time and your affirmative. All right, so staff, you're up. I won't go through the entire report again like I did last time, but to just highlight uh, what was discussed last time. Um, as, you get, as you're well aware, the property is located at 1517 Elm Terrace, and there is a six-foot high fence that is in the front yard. And there was a code enforcement case that was brought um, and is currently open, and one of the requests was to ask the applicant to go forward with a permit to the city. A permit was submitted to the city and was issued to allow a fence on the property, but to be no higher than four feet as required by the code in the front yard setback. Uh, front yard setback is for the, for the home is I believe 25 feet. And I believe we did include a, uh, a sheet in here that is an excerpt from the code for you, for your reference. And in that you will see a, uh, a table that shows the setbacks for the uh, zoning district. The front yard setback is 25 feet, so everything in that area, in that, um, from the property line going back, the fence cannot be higher than four feet. So the applicant here is tonight asking you for a variance to allow for the fence to be six feet high. I've submitted to you photographs at your last uh, meeting, and they are also attached here in the agenda that were submitted by the applicant and also uh, photographs that I took when I visited the site. Uh, my uh, analysis was that the um, allowing a six foot high fence in the front yard as illustrated in the photographs, it creates a bunker like setting in a single family subdivision. Um, during the public hearing, you uh, suggested some alternatives to the applicant to consider. Uh, one of them being to maybe do a keep the gate that was that is on, currently on the front of the of the property along the front property line over the driveway to bring it down from six feet to four feet, and then the fence that is currently on the side of the property going all the way to the street to be brought down in a stair-stepped fashion possibly. Um, after the meeting, it was even suggested to me to maybe suge suggest to the applicant to maybe bring the fence at a sloped uh, form going fr from the back of the yard going to the front of the yard. So I'm gonna refer you to page 22 of the agenda. That's page 22 of the PDF document. And you'll see the survey of the property. And I refer to this survey a lot of times at your last meeting. You'll see that there's a dark uh, line that's kind of clouded there, it's shaded there. That indicates the location of the fence. And you'll see the house, everything forward that house is, twenty. In with, is, the house is right at that 25 foot setback. So everything forward that house to the street, uh, the fence should not be higher than four feet. That's what the code says. So again, that area of that shaded area that is indicated on the, on the survey there on page 22, that is along the street, I, it's, it appeared to us from the conversation at your last meeting that you're okay with it being up to four, that you, you want, you'd rather have that gate to be to four feet, but the portion of the fence that is along, that runs along the side of the, the property can be stair-stepped or sloped in some fashion. Um, and ex an email was sent to me by the applicant, and you have a printouted copy of it on your dais there that shows the fence as it looks from the street. And the applicant drew on there, I guess it looks like a green marker, a stair step kind of fashion, how she would propose it to us. So I did ask her if she, the separation between the steps 
how many feet that is, and she said it was four feet. The applicant can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. So you see on, on the left portion of that image, that printout you see there, that green line indicates, according to the applicant, the four feet for the gate. And then on the right side, where you see that green line kind of doing a stair step, uh, it looks like to me maybe that first step would be five feet tall, and then it goes immediately up to six feet tall after running four feet. I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer that. But that was what was presented to us, and so this is for you to consider tonight. Um, just a quick question. Can I, may I? Uh, yes, please. Uh, the, uh, the shorter uh, side is the one, um, the front, right? And then yeah. the length, the, the long, along the side, that's the long piece, right, on, on the side? Correct. The shorter part of that image of the fence, or the shorter part of that fence that's in that image, yes, is the front that's immediately fronting along the street. That covers over the driveway. Okay. The longer portion, I guess I, you could see probably about half of that or a little more than half of that is what's required to be brought down to four feet. Because but, but once it goes to the building line, everything beyond, behind that then it's, it's can, can be up to six feet. Okay. Now, um, we have a survey, but the, the survey or the fence is shown to be within the right-of-way in the front. That's correct. It, it would appear it looks like she's drawn the, sur the fence to be partially into the right-of-way there, yes. So we don't have a survey of the fence itself. What you see here was what was presented to us as a permit and the building department issued the permit with the condition that the fence could not be higher than four feet in that front yard setback. So they did not, they rely on the applicant to meet the code. They didn't adjudicate or, or say that this was in the right of way or not. It would obviously would have to be moved back out of that right of way. You couldn't put that in a right of way without city council, city's uh, permission. So yeah, they, right now, if it is indeed in the right-of-way, that fence would have to be moved back a little bit. You, you can't really tell if it's in the right-of-way unless you survey it. You, do you know if it's in the right-of-way? I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's in the right-of-way or not, but the way it's shown on that drawing that you gave us, because it's not part of the survey itself. I looked at the survey, and there is no fence on there. But just so you know, the, the permit was issued, but it has not been closed. We have not had an inspection yet because this is not this issue has not been resolved. So maybe, I, maybe this should be tabled until you get the survey where the fence is. So you, you would like the applicant to provide an updated survey as to the location of the fence as it's the currently location shaped. Of the fence, Because it might be, like if you have an updated um, survey, basically I, I looked at the survey which is done by uh, Cooper, John Cooper, right? Yeah. And um, it looks like to me you know, it looks like where the fence is, where the right-of-way is, that's almost 25 feet from the straight line of the right-of-way going north and south. It might be a, uh, a good, good thing for you. And um, it, it, this is the way it looks right now. So I, I, would, I would rather see the, where the fence is today and what the right-of-way looks like not only the cul-de-sac, because you don't have an actual cul-de-sac. It's not the cul-de-sac. It's just a, an eye. It's like a, a, a very short cul-de-sac. And um, if it could be, you know, if, if the, uh, the frontage of the property is correct, you know, that line could go straight, and your 25 feet is where the fence is. So it might not be an issue. To me, you know, it won't be. So... Um, I, would, I would rather see a uh, survey of the fence of where it's located with respect to the property. If okay. I recall our last meeting, I don't think that was at issue, and I don't think any variance has been requested on that. I thought it was simply the height of the fence. You could not ask for a variance for that. That is, it could not put a fence inside the setback. So, or I'm sorry, inside that right of way. Right. So that would have to be addressed. And, and when this permit would be closed out and, and have a an, call for an inspection, you know, that's, that would be verified at that time. 
Right. So right now all we have is an issued permit. Yes, we, we see what you're trying to do. Just make sure you put it in the right location and it's the right height. And then everything else is verified afterwards. Now, yes, you, the board can certainly ask for more information, such as a more accurate survey. At our, at our last meeting, the encroachment was not the issue. The issue was strictly the height. The height of the fence. And that's what we, that's what we tabled because of the height request. So the other part is up to the building department that issues permits and all. That's not our, not our decision on that. Uh, please show that Member Huntley has now joined us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for being here. Uh, so we're up to five now. Uh, do we have any other questions of staff? Um, so this was the, in y'all's conversation, this was her feedback as far as uh, the applicant's request for a change. Yes, sir. We corresponded by email and, by, and on, the phone, on the phone. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any more questions of staff on this? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll open this up to the public hearing at this point. And our first card is? Jennifer Gagan. Uh, Jennifer. And again, please state your name and address for the record. Okay, <laughs> Jennifer Gagan, uh, 1517 Elm Terrace, Titusville, Florida, 32780. So I did submit an e email to uh, Brad here with the what I came up with while I was on the road traveling um, of something that I could make happen in a reasonable fashion without having um, for you, sir, who wasn't here, the fence is actually... Um, the panels are horizontal and they're braided. So at the post where they sit, there may be a full 16 foot piece and then two that connect under it and then a 16 foot one, which was one of the issues I had, you know, said that just taking it down to four feet is, you know, you have to dismantle much more past that four foot. Um, and then that's when I had agreed to see what I could come up with, you know, at least getting the gate down to four. And then Miss um, Rodriguez had suggested maybe doing a step for cosmetic reasons on the side to meet um, the front so it wasn't just six foot at the corner and then four where it meets. Um, so that's where I came up with the drawing. In between those two posts on the side at the corner is about eight feet. And that's how I came up with, you know, if I was able to split it, you know, four and four, that would give you four feet and then four feet to the, cor the corner post. Um, with that, I have no, in reference to that survey, I have no idea if it's really at 20, because when I measure it, it's further than 25 feet from the actual, um, when I did my homework of studying where a right of way starts and ends, um, it is more than 25 feet. Um, just so you know also that the fence I put up after a hurricane and I didn't, I was working with the homeowner's insurance and I did not realize I had to have a permit. I got cited for the permit, applied for the permit. That's when they gave me that regulation of four feet and that's where we are still today is trying to get through this process. Um, so I'm willing to do what I need to do to get it done. I literally just drove straight from Augusta to get here to try and get this matter taken care of. Um, I really want to get it resolved. <clears throat> Those, uh, I'm looking at page 32, showing the actual planks. Um, are those six foot or eight foot? Eight, I mean, six inches or eight inch boards are at that point. Are you talking about the, the width? Actual board, the, the boards, individual boards. Right, the width or the length? Width. Yeah. Uh, they are one by six. The one by sixes? Yes. Okay. So basically at the front, you're taking it down four, four sections to get down to the four feet, right? Yes, approximately. I didn't have the ability to uh, measure it when I was yeah. out of town. So yeah, yeah, that's the plan is that I will meet the requirement. If I have to go one below that just to make it fit that requirement, then that's what I'll have to do. Okay. <clears throat> So on your drawing with the green <clears throat> marker <clears throat> going around to the side, it would be 
four foot long and it'd be up to five foot and then it goes right into the six foot like staff had indicated, right? Yes. It's about an eight foot section, so half and half. half that was my the, plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, I drew another one that has three steps um, depending on because where the actual boards meet. Yeah. Um, I was determining whether it may be two steps or it may have to be three just for cosmetic purposes because the way they're braided. Um, yeah, because I don't I have think... one here with the three steps that I drew, but I only sent the one because I figured we'll just go with something yeah. and see what you guys think. Because I don't think the drawing would do it justice anyway. I think it would look probably a little bit better than that. Okay. Yeah, because as we discussed, the my house was the mother-in-law quarters to the house that is on the other street, and then it was split off and sold and rezoned as a single family residence. So my actual front door faces the back of that other residence. So that back, that side fence is my backyard. Um, and where the gate is, is my side yard, which is why I decided to apply for the variance when it was all said and done with the permit stuff. And the survey where it was drawn, that was just a rough drawing on my part when I applied for the, the permit. Uh, I personally would like to see the, the four foot's fine on the front, but the indention going a little further back than just one eight foot section. Um, start at four feet and then build yourself up basically about two posts back from what I'm, what I'm looking at here is my personal preference to see more of a staggered step going back toward the back and still give you the privacy in your backyard from the side from your neighbor there. Any other opinions on? Well, if we're discussing potentially passing the variance, then Aesthetically, I, I think if I recall our last conversation, the big problem was making sure it was four foot in the front and yes. six foot in the side slash back would not necessarily make a difference. So perhaps if we pass a motion that allows the applicant based upon aesthetics to go either an eight foot section for step up or a 12 foot section for step up. I would have no, no problem with that personally. Staff, would that be a problem as far if we were to make that determination or we have to set an actual number? I would request that you set an actual number so that we, she knows exactly what would be allowed per the permit. Okay. May I uh, say something? Certainly. The, um, you know, the, the right-of-way line coming down from the street below this house if you take that right-of-way line straight up, that the, 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 where the fence is today, it's 25 feet from that line. My feeling is, you know, it's not the cul-de-sac. And um, even if she has a, 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 a six-foot fence on the side, it's still within 25 feet from the right-of-way for the next-door neighbor. That's, and that's the way I'm looking at it. And it probably the front gate is about, you know, the way it's shown is maybe two, three feet inside the right-of-way, and that has to be within, outside the right-of-way. It has to be on private property. But the six foot, uh, it doesn't, it's like it doesn't interfere with that 25 foot setback if the line went straight. So from the right-of-way, you, you know, everybody, and from the right-of-way, it has to be 25 feet back, but that, that becomes like a burden on somebody to do this. All these lots within the subdivision, they were like 50-foot lots. You know, back then when they did the, uh, the plat on this lot, it was 50-foot lots, and they combined these, most of them, combined two lots, combined three lots, and, and, and made, made them work. So my feeling is the four-foot fence in the front, yes. But the side, it could be anything. It could be the six-foot, anything, like um, up to six feet. So, I'm, I'm okay with it. So if they you reduce it a little bit, it's fine. Okay. I was That's just me. talking for a little while. Not, yeah. not the whole length of the thing, but just, but just, just, just a, okay. a couple of sections just to make it aesthetically right. look. 
Yeah, I'm just trying not to have to dismantle the entire fence. That's the whole <laughs> purpose. I mean, because the way it was built is so that I, I wouldn't have an issue with it coming down ever, and now I'm <laughs> taking it down. So <laughs> that wasn't the original thought process. So it's up very well. So to dismantle any portion of it is going to be a task. Um, so I'm, you know, like I said, I'm willing to, I just want to get this over with. Okay. It's been forever. Brad, for clarification, the board is looking at the 25-foot side portion of the fence for the variance that would apply to just the 25-foot length that is required to be four foot in height by the code. According to the map on page, the survey on page 22 of the agenda packet, there's a 25-foot indication. Is that the part that they're seeking the variance to or a portion of that 25 feet? Yes. Part directly to the road. Yes. Can I make a motion? Well, let's, Are we there yet? let's see if we have any more questions of this witness first. Anybody else have any more questions? All right. Thank you. Very I do oh. have a question myself. Um, so, when you guys are talking about the right of way, that is where the curve of my culta, quote unquote, culta sac is. Um, and the 25 feet is a separate matter. No, the 25 Two different feet, things? Yeah. The, the actual 25 feet is from that right of way out into your property. Okay. So, you know, there was a, like a circular line there. Mm -hmm. So you would take that line, you offset it 25 feet. That would be where your four foot fence stops. And then you can put the six foot fence after that. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the code, the code reads it that way. Okay. So when I read in all the stuff where if you have a cul-de-sac, there is some statements that says that that right of way and that 25 foot, um, there's some give or take in that verbiage, basically, um, that those areas, I can't say the word grandfathered in, but there's some, allows for some extra space because that's not actually the true right away of the street. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, you know, what happens is the, uh, they, they take the cord line instead of like the straight line, mm -hmm. instead of the cul-de-sac. So and that's interpretation of the code, but, mm -hmm. but normally it's 25 foot setback from the right away. That's where you can stop your four foot fence and start six foot fence. And that would be like the little gutter in my driveway. Be that mm -hmm. point? Could be. I mean, well, right now you don't you don't have that problem, so you okay. don't want that problem. No, okay. and I'm just trying to wrap my head yeah. around the, like two separate issues or where and how and all that. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, the issue before us is the height mm -hmm. tonight. Okay. Uh, the other issue would be what you address with the planning department as to exactly I just location. Don't wanna I, my real plan is, is I don't want to have an issue with them when this is done. So if I can solve two birds with one stone by addressing it here and discussing some things. So hopefully uh, unfortunately, we, we not with you guys making a decision, but at no. least maybe getting some more insight into the material. I don't believe we have that authority to set that rule I'm sorry mm -hmm. uh, what we have is what was before us tonight is the four feet and uh, that's what we can do is what we can decide upon and then you'll have to work with the, the staff on the other part okay all right okay. all right any other questions all right thank you very much appreciate thank you coming you. up at right, this time we'll close the public hearing is there any more questions of staff if not would you like you said you'd like to make a motion. I move to, I guess I'm going to be clear. I move to, regarding variance 2-2018, deny the variance as a request to six foot in the front, requiring the applicant to have the front fence be four foot. I move to approve the part of variance 2-2018 to permit a six foot high fence on the side beginning four feet into the fence to allow a step up plan for the first four feet 
to aesthetically appeal to the corner. That Does that make sense to you, applicant? <laughs> that includes yes. a variance of, of five feet for the first four foot section. Correct. It would include a variance of five feet for the first four foot section, correct. So your motion is, is to approve as illustrated? Yes. Okay, but that If I length, could have said that, you should have told me. But that, <laughs> <laughs> that length being four feet from yes. the street going into the side. Yes, so oh, okay. ideally it would be four foot into the fence would be five foot high. Okay. And then the remainder of the fence, beginning at that four foot mark, would be six foot high. That's understood by staff. Uh, okay. Hopefully it's understood by the board too. Well, do I have a second to that motion? No, was there said the gate is included, right? The gate cannot yes. be over four feet. That is correct. Yes, that is part, part of the, the fence gate as all one item. Okay. Yes. That's it. All right, so we've had a second. Is there any more discussion? Everybody understand what the motion is? All right. In that case, may we have a roll call, please? Chairman Taylor? Yes. Vice Chairman Shahan? Yes. Member Hunley? Yes. Alternate Member Kilpatrick? Yes. Alternate Member Smith Rodriguez? Yes. All right, so that's one hurdle. Okay? <laughs> so that part is approved. <laughs> one step closer. Very good. Uh, how many pages have I got to go to the next one, sir? <laughs> yeah. Your microphone, sir. Oh, Thank you. I always need that reminder. So, uh, Assistant City Attorney Chelsea Farrell is going to give you an update on that I just next like agenda item. Let's get to 65 first. I'm sorry. Some of us are challenged. I'm sorry. That button works better for everyone. Yeah. Okay. What well, else? Well, get to teach me about this. Okay. So we're going to start off with appeal number one dash two thousand seventeen. Condemnation of 2825 South Washington Avenue, known as Bay Towers. Uh, on Council. March, yes, on March 21st, I received a written request from the attorney for the applicant to continue the appeal hearing currently set for tonight. The purpose of this request is to allow for the final electrical inspection as they ins expect that to conclude all items required to lift the condemnation order and he requests to continue this item until your April 25th meeting. And if I could have a vote from this board, then we will not be required to re-advertise as that item would be rescheduled to a date certain. All right, so we've had a request to reschedule for the electrical inspection, is that correct? The request is to continue the item that's on your agenda, appeal number 1-2017, until your next scheduled meeting on April 25th to allow things to happen, okay. Yes. We need a motion? Yes, we need a motion for that. I make a motion to, oh. I make a motion to extend this. Is it an extension? Continue. Continue, Continue. this until our April meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? May we have a roll call, please? Member Hunley? Yes. Alternate Member Kilpatrick? Yes. Alternate Member Smith Rodriguez? Yes. Chairman Taylor? Yes. Vice Chairman Shahaya? Yes. All right. So the next item, sir, starts on page 77. How are you doing that? Just clicking? I'm just doing this. Oh, he's I mean, clicking? I, I, you can go click on this top right here. Put 77. On that? Yeah. Just type 77. Oh, I don't even know that one. Okay. See the little um, up and down thing up here? Okay. You get it? Well, I don't know. I'm on page 78, right? So that's, next we're one? going to that's page, page 77. Page you just number. go page up and page down. Page up and page down there. What page are you on now? 77. Well, okay. what, what's, is that where well, it starts? I, I got right 70. Here. You type in the page number right 77 there. 77 is, oh, this, this is it. Okay. Oh, this is an appeal. Oh, okay. this, is a big, this is a beginning. This is of another it. appeal. Okay. Yeah. Um, just in case you didn't hear, you weren't here when we began. Have you filled out uh, notices? You have. Okay. Good. Thank you. 
Okay, at this time we'll uh, go to appeal 1-2018 for 613 Hollow Glen Drive. Uh, staff, are you up for that one? All right. So this appeal request tonight is for um, an interpretation of the administrator um, of the land development regulations. Uh, this is specifically for a property located at 613 Hollow Glen Drive, and I'm speaking to you uh, looking at page 78 of your PDF document. And there's a two-page staff report that we created for this appeal request. The zoning on the portion of, the, of this property is currently residential multifamily. It's R2, but yet there's a patio home on there. This is a, a subdivision that was approved as a patio home subdivision. And those are essentially really small lots, single-family lots. Um, that particular use was removed from that zoning district back in 2006 with an approval of an ordinance. And, but it did have a provision in that same ordinance that any subdivisions or plats that were in review or approval at that time uh, could continue as if that ordinance had amended, been, uh, changed at all. So in other words, this use is consistent with the zoning district. Um, the administrative interpretation here is that based upon the definition of a corner lot as shown in the agenda, and I'll show you the, the survey, the entire length of the property that faces along Hollow Glen Drive, adjacent to 16, 613, is considered to be a front yard. The lot at 613 Hollow Glen Drive is not located at the intersection of two streets, as defined in the code, and the front setback is not recorded on the plat or deed, which would have been an exception if it was recorded in the deed or part of the plat. It, that would trump anything in the code. I, in other words, identifying where, what would be a front setback or a side setback or a rear so without that being recorded on a plat or a deed, we have to follow what the code says and the definitions in there as far as defining what is, an, what is a corner lot and where the setbacks are. The applicant can submit a request for a variance to allow a six-foot fence in the front yard, which we've defined as a front yard, and I'll explain what I mean in a moment, or appeal the interpretation that the lot is located at the intersection of two streets. The applicant has requested to appeal the administrator's interpretation of what the code says and the definitions of what a corner lot is. So I've included sections of the code here for you to understand uh, what we're talking about. On that same page, page 78 of your agenda packet, you'll see a section number 30-182, height and location requirements. Subparagraph A, single family residential uses. Paragraph one, front yard. The maximum height of a fence or wall on any required front yard setback shall be four feet. That's where we started. Further down in section 37-1 starts our definitions in the city's land development code. On the next page, under definition of setback, there's a subparagraph there, A, front setback. And I'll read that to you. The area measured from the front line extending across the entire width of the lot. The lot line of a lot abutting a public street shall be deemed the front lot line. The front setback of a corner lot shall be that yard abutting the street with the least frontage. The front setback, I'm sorry, unless otherwise determined on a recorded plat or on a recorded deed, which I just mentioned to you, and that is not the case here. The front setback of a lot existing between two streets, not intersecting at a corner of the lot, shall be that area abutting the street on which adjoining properties face, unless determined on a recorded plat or in a recorded deed. Further down, subparagraph D, all of this will make sense in a moment. Corner lot, the side yard area abutting a public or private street and extending from the front setback line to the rear lot line. I'm going to skip around just a little bit and bring you to page 82 of your packet. It's the second to last page. And you'll see a zoning map. You'll see labeled there the property highlighted in blue, 613 Hollow Glen Drive. The shortest portion of that lot is the front lot, is, the front, is where the front setback would be traditionally measured. On a, 
if the property was located at the intersection of two streets, this would be considered a corner lot. However, because it is not located at the intersection of two streets, you see that Hollow Glen Drive runs the entire length of this property. That entire frontage is considered to be a front yard. And so the applicant does not have the benefit of putting in a six foot high fence inside the portion of the lot that is closest to the west portion of the, of the property, toward the, on the um, west of the house. I'm gonna refer you to page 83 to give you a little more clarification of what I mean by that. That's the last page of your packet. You'll see the lot kind of reoriented a little bit. You'll see the street on that last page there in that survey runs the entire length of that lot. And because this lot is not considered to be a corner lot per the definitions, that entire length of running, running along uh, Hollow Glen Drive is considered to be a front yard. So you can't have a fence in that, 20, in that front setback that, for, that's higher than four feet. The applicant uh, submitted a permit and was denied a permit to allow a fence inside that front setback on the side of the house there. As you see, the front driveway is, you see the location of that, that's considered to be the front, but because of the fact, again, because this is not a corner lot, the entire frontage is a front. So I'm gonna refer you back to the staff report on page 79. So again, another definition from the code, lot. A lot is a portion of a subdivision or any other parcel of a land intended as a legal unit for transfer of ownership for, or for development or both, it includes the term plot or parcel and is further defined as follows. And I bolded the one particular section of that definition that's most important here, and that's corner lot. Any lot situated at the intersection of two streets and abutting such streets. So the question here is, is the image that you see on page 82 a lot that is located at the intersection of two streets. And the administrator has determined that is not, and therefore it is not a corner lot and cannot benefit from that corner lot's uh, provision to allow a fence to be higher than six feet along that front there. So that's where we are. I hope uh, you understood that. I'll try and answer any of your questions about this. The applicant is here to um, provide any evidence as well. If they're sticking to the original application, how far were they looking to bring that six foot fence along that line? Or do you know, do you have that information? I'd have to refer to the applicant to tell you, but my understanding, if you look on the last page of your PDF document, page 83, yes. on that survey, my understanding is they would like to have the fence at the corner of the house, closest to that corner where the Hollow Glen turns where that curve is. And so had the fence continue out towards the street and then along the street at six feet high. Now the applicant may tell you they want to bring it in or maybe, maybe all along the property line. I'm not sure the applicant will have the answer for that. Okay. But, but the problem we have is that regardless of where it would be located, if it's six feet high, it would be inside that setback because this is not a corner line. Okay. Does anyone else have a question, staff? Yes, sir. The uh, front setback then is 25 feet from the north side of the property, basically, or the, the, shorter, um, the shorter length or the shorter width of the property, right? The lot, it's 25 feet, that's the, it has to be 25 foot setback from that, yes, from sir. that line to the 25. back. So the six foot fence doesn't start, it's, it's allowed to start 25 feet into into that area, right? On the, the, uh, on the front. A fence can't be higher than six feet within that setback. Within that setback. Correct. Okay. Now, just uh, bear with me for a second. If the, um, the road going north and south, okay, has a name, let's say we name it Road X, then Road X with intersect with that road on the north side, then it becomes a corner lot? It if we look at the definition of a corner lot on page 80, 79 of your packet, 
So again, that, that bolded portion of, of the definition of a lot, corner lot, it says any lot situation at the intersection of two streets and abutting such streets. So I, you could say, yes, that if both, if Hollow Glen only extended all the way out to that corner or where that curve started and then the rest of it was renamed, the administrator could potentially call that as a corner. Brad, did staff analyze if there were stock bars or other oh. ways to interpret whether there was an intersection of streets? Could you go into that detail? We, we couldn't identify anything like that at, that at this area. The, we did find other intersections where there may be crosswalks or stop bars where, where a traditional intersection would, would happen. But in this particular area, that does not exist on the pavement. Or anywhere. There are no other traffic control devices yeah. that could probably give us any indication that this is an intersection. Are there other questions of staff before we open up the public? I know this is an unusual application because this board typically just hears variances and not appeals. This is different from a variance application because this is a interpretation of a staff decision, something that has been decided, uh, an official position that staff has taken. The applicant is not asking for a variance before you tonight, so keep that in mind as you listen to the comments. Thank you. All right, we'll open up the public at this time. May we have the first card, please? Eric Hall and Brandy Higgins. Welcome, and please state your name and addresses for the record, please. Hi, first off, apologize for being late. We were a little late earlier. That's uh, off work. Uh, my name's Eric Hall. And I'm Brandy Higgins. Nice to meet you. And your address, please? 613 Hollow Glen Drive, Titusville. All right, thank you. And I'm sorry for speaking up. I wasn't really sure if I could, and I wanted to make sure you had all of the information you needed. Um, it is an interesting case in addition to the fact that you don't normally hear appeals because if you were to pull up into our house, um, any person in this table I'm sure would say that's a corner lot because it visually looks just like a corner lot. So we purchased this home because of that lot. Uh, we also went around the subdivision because we do know that in other cities, not just Titusville, there are restraints on um, six foot inches on the side as well. And so we made sure that other lots in our subdivision have six foot inches. And there were six of them at the time. We just saw a few when we were, you know, we didn't really realize there would be an issue at this point. Um, so we did purchase it because of the lot. We have a 70 pound dog and a four foot fence would not be safe for kids walking to the school stop, which is right next it's, to our stop. So it's a rescue dog as well. It's, it's not aggressive, but we're working to, you know, to habitat that dog again. Yeah. And we don't want to risk as far as, cause there's a bus stop up the street or we're at that corner. So that's why it was really important for us to purchase this house, and we made sure of all of that before. And um, although I'm sure that maybe according to the um, deed, it doesn't necessarily say a corner lot maybe, but the realtor also sold it to us as a corner lot. So we did pay an extra premium um, for this house and this lot. Um, so I just wanted to give you a few chain of events or a timeline so that you could also understand just as I'm sure hearing everything that um, Brad went through was confusing. It was confusing for us and it's been uh, difficult throughout this last three months. So our fence was approved to be installed by both the HOA and I believe the city. Um, that's what our fencing company explained to us and it was going to be installed January 31st. And the city pulled the application and denied it on January 25th from what our fencing company explained to us. I called the city that evening and the next morning again and, call, and was able to get a hold of someone named Lynn who was very helpful. Um, and he explained to me that the denial was because of the neighbor's lot behind us. And he specifically stated that our back lot is the neighbor's front lot. So we were not sure how to proceed and we asked if there was anything that we could do um, because our neighbors were okay with our six foot fence. We've already double checked that before even doing any application um, and they were fine with it. Um, also, if you look from a standpoint, I know the line of sight has been a thing that has come up. If you, our lot is actually in a side entrance, it's not as a back entrance, it's not even the front entrance to the subdivision. So line of sight is also not an issue when you're on the road, you can see fine. It, so there's no issues that would prevent it from having a six foot fence. Um, so he, so 
Lynn responded that he would double check with his chain of command and get back to me. And he did that on Monday, January 29th. And he explained to me that the answer was no. Um, I asked why the answer was no, and he said that there was, it was because of a statute. I asked what statute and if there were, how others in our subdivision were able to get a six foot fence if there was a statute. And to, am I clear enough? I'm sorry. Thank you. And well, I thought I was being quiet. <laughs> and um, he explained that he didn't know the answer to either of those, the statute or why others were able to get it. And so I was obviously frustrated um, knowing that we have others that have identical lots to ours that have the six foot fence. So I did call an attorney because it seemed like there was a lack of, a lack of justice here. So my attorney asked for writing, um, the denial in writing. And so when I called the city back, they said that they could not give that to me and they did not know what that meant. And I said, well, my attorney needs it and is there anything you can provide to me? And he said, I can provide you the statute, will that work? So I said, if that's what you have, then yes, I'll need to send that to my attorney. Um, he called back, he never sent that statute. And then he called back, I would say a couple hours later and asked if we could give him 24 to 48 hours max because his building official believes that they could get it approved and that they would need to talk about it and they would work, in a, work a solution. That was, um, it was a Monday, so I was supposed to hear back from them, obviously, by Wednesday, close to business. And I didn't. And they never called me back at all. And so we, we never heard back from them. So we called a couple more times, and I couldn't get a hold of anyone at the city. Um, finally, I was able to get a hold of someone called named Gary who I looked up online because I didn't have any other information on how to get a hold of someone. I also had written emails to Steve Adams and others in the city, and no one had responded to my emails either. So this had been at least two weeks at this point. Um, Gary did say to me when I, when I finally was able to get a hold of him that the fence application was denied. There was still no, so this is now, you know, into February. My fence was already supposed to be installed, and there was still no information on why, no more clarification, no, no anything. Um, so we actually went in to person, in person to talk to Gary and to see if we could talk to his supervisor. Um, I actually worked with his uh, supervisor's his supervisor's husband at NASA, so I was like, oh, great, she'll help me, and she'll give me some great information. Um, and she was way more helpful than what I had experienced. Um, she... We sat in a meeting with her, and she still was not able to provide me a reason for the denial. So I was still a little surprised. If it's a denial for a statue, it seems like it would be pretty clear that here's the reason. Um, she did explain to me that there was a Board of Appeals meeting on June 24th, 2015, and that that was the reason. So at the end of the conversation, they had pulled up this Board of Appeals meeting and explained to me that that was now why um, the fence was denied, which is obviously a different reason than the first um, one or two we've already heard. So it has felt confusing as to why we're not able to get this fence. Um, we found that meet the, meet those meeting minutes online, and we went through them, and we're both, we both uh, read regulation at work a lot, so we were very detail-oriented and went through them quite a bit. And it says explicitly in that Board of Appeal meeting minutes that they did not want the outcome of that case to set precedence for the future. So I felt confused as to why we are hearing that as the reason to as denial when in the case explicitly states they do not want that to be used that way. So I asked Peggy that. I think this is probably mid into February at this point. I have the date written down. Um, and we have evidence of anything if you guys would like to see it. Um, and they explained to us that it, it was just the answer, that, that there's no reason they would never give us like clarification. There, in any email, you'll never see a reason to how they can use that Board of Appeals meeting. There's, they never answered any of our questions. Um, so then we sent them a list of all of, in pictures with addresses and pictures of all of the houses in our subdivision, even some outside the subdivision that look identical to ours, and asked, you know, can you please explain to, as to why they can have the six foot fences and what are the differences? And they responded to five of the six. They actually omitted the third listing, which is a weird one. If you just forgot, you think you maybe missed the first or last, not the third. Um, and so I respond, and they did give reasons, which were very minute information, like a stop sign, which we do have a stop sign on our side lot, but well, I guess... Well, be clear, because when, when this location that they omitted uh, is identical to ours, and how Brad stated 
there. It's the same street going down, and it right, has a six foot fence. There's no down. other stop sign. That, there's nothing. Ours actually has a stop sign, and theirs doesn't. Ours is just a stop sign is on our side yard. They don't even have a stop sign anywhere in their vicinity. So when I responded, can you please explain the one that you missed, the third one? And she explained that I didn't send that to her, which obviously an email you can show that that I did. <laughs> and then she responded again, um, which does make me question what's going on behind the scenes. Um, she responded again after I'm assuming she went back and did her research. And I think it, maybe it was Brad that did answer them. And someone did omit the third one and apologized for saying that I didn't send it and that she omitted it and that it was approved in error. And so at that point, we decided that this has felt very unfair um, just because the rules or laws seem obsolete and hard to interpret. It doesn't seem that that should be negatively impacting your citizens of Titusville. Um, it, it feels like this is a, a very huge lack of, lack of justice, and especially when there's one that an identical situation in our lot, in our subdivision, that has a six-foot fence, and especially when we're just trying to do something that's for the safety of our dog and for kids walking to the school bus. And it just doesn't seem like this should be this big of a deal for us to be able to get a fence that we've already paid for. <laughs> and so that was a long, you know, drawn out story, but that was a sequence of events that we've endured for quite, a, quite some time. Yeah. Um, we are at a point where we don't even know what we're appealing. Um, we've been giving several reasons to, of why it's been denied. Uh, each person says a different reason. So we appealed and we appealed something we didn't know what to appeal. Okay, and yeah. we're, we're trying our best. This isn't our field. I do finance. I, I, I have and no I idea how this stuff works. <laughs> so we're trying to make sense of this, and we would appreciate some some um, some guidance in this. And hopefully, um, we won't have to deal with this matter anymore. It's been really hard. Uh, it's my first home. I purchased my VA loan. Um, I'm a war veteran. Uh, first home, and this is not the, uh, the American dream I anticipated. What, you said there's a stop sign on the side yard. If, do you have the packet in front of you? I don't think I do. We have the packet. Packet. Just, um, just page 82, the second to last page. Mm -hmm. It's on the opposite street of our side yard. I have pictures on my phone as well. Okay, you this see that? one. Okay, you see that map? So it mm -hmm. says Preserve Way and then Hollow Glen. I get, I get where your house is. Where's the stop sign? Where does it say Preserve Way? Preserve, preserve Way. Thank you. Okay, so then our house is here. Yep. Okay, so the pack, the stop sign is right here in our corner, a lot across the street though. So it's right here, and it, it, this is says Preserve Way, and this or this one says Hollow Glen, and this one says Preserve Way, and then there's a sidewalk right here that crosswalks. So if our house is here, it's not like on our lot, but if you look is at it. If that's the whole packet, can you go to the page right behind that one? Mm -hmm. go to the binder, or the binder. Eighty go to page eighty two, please. Okay. This one says eighty one. Eighty one. No. Hold it up, let me see. Is that the page? Yeah, the one on on the left. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so your lot is highlighted there. So looking at that particular page, where's that stop sign? So in the West End, so we're Hollow Glen. What? Okay, I'm gonna show you. So right here, there's a stop sign. I wrote on this. I hope that this helps. So here's our lot, and there's a street sign here, and there's a, site, a stop sign right here. Okay. Okay, I got you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got you now. And then there's also a crosswalk here, and if our, our lot obviously looks even more of a corner lot than these because. We're so there's a crosswalk there. where? <laughs> I'm trying to be helpful, and I think I'm messing up more. Um, so here's the, can, this, is, can everyone see now? Yeah. Okay, here is our lot, and there's a crosswalk here on this person's lot. I think it's probably closer to the first one I drew, because it kind of goes diagonal almost into our corner. And then the house, they just built this house. It was a lot before. And I don't even know if the, it had a second stop sign before they built the house. It only had the hollow glen, but now it has a stop sign that says preserve way as well. So it has an intersection even, two stop signs. Okay, so the stop sign is facing, when you come in off of Sisson onto mm -hmm. Preserve Way, there's a stop sign. Right there, okay. and then it has the intersection sign. And the crosswalk, you said goes diagonally from? On the left, on the the left stop sign one. across? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And it doesn't have a whole crosswalk. It just has where into their well, yard. It's like sidewalk and then it goes into the street. But it has like the little bumps. It just doesn't have like the line on the street. Okay. Because you're, you're here because the city said that your lot is not a corner lot. That's mm -hmm. the only reason. Whether other people have six foot fences or not. I mean, some people do it without permits, without codes. Right. Other setbacks, other zoning here or there. But they're saying that that lot is not a corner lot. So seeing where the stop sign is and the crosswalk would help us determine whether city right. valid or maybe they were incorrect in determining whether it's a, a corner lot. Okay. I mean, I, w I don't know like, if this is helpful at all, but I mean, if you look at our house, it's clearly a corner lot. I mean, I get that there may be these definitions that someone made up, um, and I'm sure that they had good reason to make them because we need laws and we need rules, but this is clearly a corner lot. I mean, there's no way you could, no one would not consider this a corner lot. When we are speaking with Peggy, she's even like, well, if it's not a corner lot, what is it, a curb lot? And then, like, there's not even a definition for what our lot is. We clearly don't have two front lots. Like, it's a corner lot house. Well, we were told it was a curb lot, and we were said, okay. And there's no definition for a curb <laughs> lot anywhere. So it's pretty interesting and that's why we went this route to appeal it because this is a corner lot and i get that maybe the laws are unclear and do need change but clearly this is not not a corner lot i want to ask you a, a quick question may i, I ask you a car? yes yes yeah. sir <laughs> um you uh situated the uh the house on this lot and you have a 25 foot setback yes yes sir is the 25 foot setback that's a corner lot setback, right? From the side. 25 feet is a front yard setback. How about the 25 feet on the side, the one that they have? That entire length is a front yard. That's the what? A front yard. The whole thing is front. Everything, everything adjacent to Hollow Glen is considered to be a front yard. How about on the other side of the street? The other side, the one that goes north and south, why is it 25 foot setback? Because it's not considered a corner lot. If the lot was at an intersection of two streets, according to the definition of a corner lot, then they would have the benefit of, of a different setback. But because it is not at the intersection of two streets, the entire frontage, the entire length of Hollow Glen um, of that property is considered to be a front yard. You mean it's worse than, it would be like the definition makes it worse for a corner lot than it doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't right? make sense to us either, sir. <laughs> it's really, is I mean, the, it are the lots next to Preserve Way, either of those lots, those are corner lots? You have the intersection of two streets, yes. Yes, so Preserve and Hollow Glen, okay. Yes. So, so is there some sort of um, like slang definition <laughs> of corner lot? I get aesthetically, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Aesthetically, it seems to be on a corner, but I also understand that when there's not two named streets there and it's not an actual sharp corner, that I understand that concept. So is there some sort of other definition for this type of lot? No, ma'am. I can, let me, maybe I can explain our understanding as to why this definition is here. If you take a look at the um, last page on the survey, so you see the orientation of that house. And imagine the neighbor to the rear of this property, not to the side of the property, to the rear. Yes. And that lot would be facing almost the intersection of Hollow Glen and Preserve Way. So if you go back to page 82 of your packet, you'll see that rear lot, that lot that's to the rear of this property. Right. And you see how it's oriented. So the house on that lot is going to be facing the intersection of Hollow Glen and Preserve Way. And they're going to have to meet a 25-foot front setback, including the fence. Now you have a neighbor, the, the applicants here, have a house with their backyard facing this person's front yard. Does everyone follow me? Yes. No? And we do have. Just a moment. Yeah.
We also have images that have every the corner lots that have the person that would be their, I guess, their side, since it's not technically front yards like ours, that have less space in their front yard. Be, they're considered corner lots, but their back, their neighbor has less space in their front yard than what ours it would be. Well, if, if you and all, we have images of If you that. all could let Seth finish his oh, thought sorry. on that so I can understand what he's saying first, yes, and then we'd like to yes, hear from you again. So if you look at, so going back to the last page, the survey, that plane on the side of their house here is equal to the plane of the front of the house that's behind them. Do you understand? Yes. Plane. Yes, a horizontal plane. And so the entire street is designed that way. All the houses have to meet that same setback. And then when you get that house on the, at the very end, if it's going to be oriented differently, whether it's put a fence or his house, it's got to ha maintain that same site, uh, horizontal plane as well. And I think that's probably what the intent of this is here. This is not only applicable to this subdivision, but other subdivisions as well, where there may be a lot at, the, at a curve of a block where the road just continues around around that curve, but doesn't necessarily technically intersect with another road per the definition of a corner lot. A corner lot is defined as a corner, as a lot at the corner of where, the in, where two streets intersect. Hollow Glen and Preserve Way intersect right there in front of their lot. That's so the question idea. for you is, does that intersection have to be located where that curve is in order for it to be an intersection, up to, in order for this lot to be considered a corner lot? Does say, repeat that. If you look at the page 82, Preserve Way and Hollow Glen do intersect, mm -hmm. but they do not intersect at the, at the uh, curve of their lot. They intercept about 10 feet before. I'm just helping her. They intersect way behind that. I'm line. sorry. <laughs> it's a corner lot to me, too. I'm sorry. Okay. It's on a corner, and two streets do come together. So okay. I'm, I make your, it's statutorily or ordinance wise, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're on a corner. Okay. So if that's your interpretation, then that the, corn, that the intersection can touch in any portion of this lot in order for it to be considered a corner lot, that would be your interpretation if that's what you would like to do. Just understand this is an appeal. Your decision becomes applicable to similar situations, not just to particular this, this property. Well, what about the corner? This is not a variance. What, what about the, at the other end, at the other corner? That's a real corner because I can't see the street. Is there any at the end of Hollow Glen? Oh, it when it keeps going, is that is that a street there? There eventually becomes one, and then straight on it dead ends. I don't quite follow at the end. I'd Preserve Way, you get on Hollow Glen, you go by their house. Keep going down Hollow Glen. There's another corner lot at the end of Hollow on this picture. There's that corner. Do two, is, is this a different street than Hollow Glen that it intersects with? May I see what you're referring yeah. to? It's that same picture. Right there. Right there. Is this a street here? I can take a look at the aerial and see what it is. Okay. And it's considered a corner lot. <laughs> that that particular piece of property would be considered a corner lot because you see that it, there is an intersection of Hollow Glen and Bog Hollow Road. Okay, and I don't even think there is a stop <coughs> sign. It's literally it just has it. There is a there is a stop bar though, according to the aerial, which I do see. And they have a stop bar. They have a stop bar that is at the intersection of uh, Preserve Way and Hollow Glen, but again, it's not at that curve of their lot. So again, so, going back to your concern, if you believe, if, you're, if your interpretation of this is that regardless of where it's located, the intersection, then you would have to approve their repeal, basically. But if you do not see, if, you, if you, your interpretation is that the intersection of two streets has to happen where that curve of the property happens, then you would have to deny their repeal. Okay, what did we decide, all of you, what did we decide on the corner lot down, was it River Edge or River, towards New York, New York? That in well, that new I'm, neighborhood. I'm not sure it even makes a difference. And when we're looking mm -hmm. at Preserve Way here, to me, if you come in on Preserve Way and there's a stop sign, Preserve Way ends at the stop sign. 
and that means Hollow Glen goes straight through. You don't cross over Preserve Way because Preserve Way stopped at the stop sign. So even by your definition, it doesn't, it doesn't even create a corner. And the definition says two streets and the house is abutting both streets. No part of this lot is touching Preserve Way because Preserve Way stops at the stop sign when you enter. And, and I understand, while I understand that aesthetically it looks like a corner lot, I, would, I too would call it a corner lot. If I'm looking at the definition, and the reason for that definition is because everything on that street has to be within this setback and this fence all the way out there is going to disrupt that whole line on that street. I understand why that definition is very clear. And if what we do today is going to affect cases down the road, then I'm even more concerned about disrupting this when it's clearly not two streets and this house, this lot is not abutting Preserve Way in any sort of shape. Can I add one more comment yes. when you get a chance? The appeal from June 24th, 2015, I'm making an assumption, so maybe you guys can help me understand because I don't understand it all. I assume that that was an appeal because they would they considered that lot a corner lot originally. And then the I think it was maybe the builder appealed it to not be considered a corner lot. So that's why it's a little even more confusing. It's so we already so hearing your concern about making a decision that has impacted future decisions, they already made a decision that they didn't want to impact every single future decision, and it's impacting every future decision and not being looked at case by case. The appeal, well, and, the and appeal I, is. And I understand that, but when the definition says two street, can you explain to me how your property is touching two specific streets? Because that's what the definition says. So can you please explain to me how your property is touching two streets? Because that'll help us determine whether there's a corner or not. Well, so I, I guess I was wondering, they had that definition originally created when they considered it a corner lot in June 24th, 2015 as well. So they considered it a corner lot with that definition. And since, there, since there's no other definition to describe what my lot is, it's almost like we are by default getting a definition that isn't necessarily accurate because neither define it correctly. And to interpret it, it's a case by case basis is what they clearly stated. So even if uh, we did have a motion for this, it doesn't set precedence for future curb lots or corner lots or mm -hmm. what do, have you. Do we have whatever this um, variance was in 2015? We do, have it. Do, is that something? Yeah, we do. Because I, the variance could have been for a bunch of other things, I don't know. The applicant is referring to an appeal case that happened in 2015 for the River Edge subdivision. Just so you understand, the motion that was approved in that particular case was specifically stated to only be applicable to that case. And so we have not been able to apply that to anywhere else. What we're relying on is what the code says and not that appeal. Okay, so to address the applicant's comments, the applicant is concerned because of several contacts with emails and phone calls mm -hmm. to many members of the city. Yes. One of whom indicated that this other decision was out there. They okay. sent us the Board of Appeal. Even. Okay. So to staff, of the several people that were named by the applicant, they don't sound like those people are the ones that actually made the final decision in this case. They're the ones interpreting what that official made, right? Yes. The, I understand the confusion of the applicant receiving several phone calls and, and I believe and the staff was trying to figure out a solution to this. Um, what we determined based on what the code sections and the definitions that we presented you tonight was that this in case is not, in this situation is not a considered to be a corner lot. Now, I did provide to them an email on February 12th with that interpretation and that language that I provided in that email was carried over to this staff report that we read to you tonight as well. Now, there was another email prior to that that I sent that included an interpretation that also included reference to, to that appeal, but that was, an er that was an error. What we are relying on is strictly what the code says, so we don't have to go back to an appeal that happened two years ago or three years ago. I have a quick question for you. If you go back to uh, page 82, please. And go on the uh, southeast corner of, uh, like, uh, at the lower right-hand side. We have a breakaway trail, and then there is a street coming from the north-south, north-south street. 
that's a corner lot there, right? Yes, sir. I do see that. I'm looking at an aerial. It's Breakaway Trail and Bog Hollow Road. And that's a corner lot. Yeah. And How that, would that be different than the one that we are looking at today? That one would have the benefit of ha being considered a corner lot and therefore have a shorter setback along that portion of Bog Hollow Road. But how is it different physically than the one that we are looking at today? Not different at all. Okay. And basically what I'm looking at is Hollow Glen Drive and then the other street going north and south. That's, that's a named street. It's not a named street. It's part of Hollow Glen, Glen Road. But on the other hand, it could be named XYZ. That's, that's my, my thinking. Because that's not different. That's any different because from the setting and the setback, the way it, it interferes with the setback to the other lot, you know, to the other lot to the, just there's two lots to the north of that lot on, on the breakaway trail that acts exactly the same thing as the ones to the south. And actually, this one is a little bit better yeah. than the other one. Yes, sir. Again, back to page 79 of your packet, the definition we threw in your corner lot, we're relying on the fact that it says any lot situated situated at the intersection of two streets and abutting such streets. And all we can rely on is there must be two streets with two different names. And so if we have one street that continuously goes across the frontage of that property, the same name, we're relying on it to say that that is one front. That, that corner that Sid was just referring to and the other corner um, that Lori was referring to, are those curved corners or are those actual corners? like an intersection with a stop sign. I know you said there's stop bars at the other one. They are intersections. I'm looking at an area and I do see crosswalks and stop bars. Okay. At both of those examples. And then the one that has, that continues on, there's actually one that continues, well, there's two. One that continues on exactly like ours has way even worse situation, less room, has no stop sign, no stop bars, nothing, and it has the six foot fence as well. That was the one they said that they omitted that they said was approved in error. And then there was another one that is two, there's an intersection, but the street name is the same. It's, if you look at, if you look down subdivision, it's, the Hollow Glen, it goes all It's the, the same area. street all the way through, and there's yeah. multiple corner lots on that that are apparently yeah, I okay. I exact address that where it doesn't have a stop bar or anything. That yeah, we have there. multiple addresses. And to address your concern about how, this, how much this occurs, um, I asked for variance applications since 2000. Um, they, Peggy sent me an email and said, I cannot find a fence variation to increase the height of a fence in the front yard since 2000. And our concern was... So this is clearly a really poorly written... Well, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, but no. for... This is a very rare situation, a very poorly written law to be applied in a very rare situation so, that's really negatively impacting. Brad, is staff working on an amendment to this code section? Staff was asked by City Council to draft an ordinance revising this section. Which Peggy did inform us that could take up to a year for us to be able to use that. And our fence was supposed to be installed in January. Is there a six foot cent fence on the other end of that street? Yes. And how many six-foot fences do we have throughout this neighborhood? At least I have, 10. I have emails of all the addresses. Yes. Six in the exact situations that look like ours, if not worse situations, but more. And they're, they're not, is theirs even as a, yours is a safety concern, which I, I, I applaud you <laughs> yes. that, you know, you want to keep people safe. Yeah. So how do we write this and not make it affect somebody down the road, even though it's an appeal? The, I didn't ask you, did I? <laughs> your decision in, on an appeal of an administrative interpretation will affect future if, if similar situations of this. I mean, well, this is a unique on a situation. a similar situation, so. I would like to see that they're treated fairly okay. because physically the lots are the same. I'm just pointing out the difference between an appeal and a variance. A variance would be specific to that particular property. I get that. I okay. get what you're saying. So... Is there a way to structure this that we could do our approve an appeal or we that it is a corner lot and 
not have it affect everybody, but I don't care if it affects everybody. It's a corner lot. And mm -hmm. physically, putting a six-foot fence on this corner lot is the same thing as putting a six-foot fence on the corner lot at the other intersection. It's a curve in the road on both sides, and it has the same okay. effect. A decision to an appeal will have a impact of general application where a variance decision is specific to the unique parcel that is before you, which is not the case right now. Say that again. A decision based on an appeal will have an application that is general across the city, while a, a decision based on a variance would be specific to a unique parcel that has a hardship, which is not the case that's presented before you right now. The applicant has the option of requesting a variance for the fence that they would like to construct on their property. That's not what you're considering. You're considering whether staff has appropriately interpreted the code. I don't feel like they were given guidance enough in the city we to know what they were asking a variance for to get the same treatment as their neighbors. I don't feel like they were guided to do this. They're not attorneys. It's also not our responsibility to make sure everyone is educated. Everyone needs to educate themselves. But more importantly, if we make a decision today that's going to affect several properties that we have no idea what they look like and no idea where they're located, when these particular applicants have an opportunity to come before this exact same board and request a variance for what they're going to do, knowing how strongly some of the members on this board feel about it, maybe that would be a better avenue. If the code is going to be rewritten and it could take up to a year, I hate to say it, they could wait an extra year and do nothing and then see if it can be approved that way. But we are going to approve something today and it's going to affect several other properties that we have no idea what that is down the road because it's not just this property. And, and their that's dog, not fair. And their dog is going to affect children that are walking by their yard. Their dog is not part of the interpretation that we are making here today. No, it's not. But they're trying to protect the public and we're not helping them do that. And now it's going to cause them more. And what, you want them to put the dog to sleep? I know we're here to do this according to the to the law. Okay, we've we've gone beyond public discussion at this point, public hearing. We're discussing amongst ourselves. So unless you have a specific question for these applicants, if not, I'm going to close the public hearing. Could I just put one more thought out there? Maybe the thought is that you could, I mean, preserve way is literally less than probably ten feet from my my sidewalk. So maybe that is the interpretation that we can use in that way it wouldn't impact if you agreed that the interpretation is that as long as this, the intersection is right there and it would i mean it's our house is the only house facing that intersection so it technically is on this side the only house that would be considered part of the intersection so maybe that could ease your fear of making a decision that would impact future ones that are not what you want <coughs> bless you God bless you. Is the intent of the law for a line wait, of sight? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Oh, we're still in public hearing. Right oh, we're now. still sorry. sorry. Any more That's questions it. of the applicants? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate it. you. Now, if you have more discussion of staff, we can address that. Okay? Now I've lost it. Um, you lost it. Okay. You had a question about the site. Yeah, isn't the, isn't the whole thing, isn't the whole reason we do this is so the line of sight coming around a corner. Isn't that why you write that, the ordinance or statute that way? That's part of it. I mean, if they are within a line of sight, that fence just couldn't be there anyway. But the, there is a, the rest of the property then could still have that six foot high fence if this was considered to be a, a corner lot. So the, mainly my understanding about the purpose of this is to create, maintain that horizontal plane um, along the street. Of sight, a line of sight, or not a line of sight of vehicles. Of the no, just a, fence. Not a vehicle, just a aesthetics. Yeah, it's more aesthetics. Than okay. Is there any way that we, as a board, can do anything for them? For and for this, I, I feel like if they come to the city, they come to you for the expertise, and you are the ones that do the well, statutes. How can we help them? I mean. It, how long has this been going on and they're going to have to apply again to get a variance and what kind of in cost are they going to incur by doing that? You know, in the meantime, they have already paid for a fence and, you know, how can we give them some way to have some closure or 
Well, I could suggest this based on what you suggested already about the interpretation. The board's interpretation could be, it sounded like what, what you were going with this, was that the intersection of two streets doesn't necessarily have to occur at the curve of the property. That if it touches anywhere along that property, then it's considered a corner lot. And that's what, it sounded like that's where you're going. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that would be a very narrow interpretation, you know, for very similar situations like this, which I can't anticipate would be anywhere else in the city. I'm sure there probably are very few like this. But that's one way that you could find for the applicant. However, our, I mean, our strict interpretation was that in two intersection, the intersection of two streets happens at that curve. And so that's why we're here today, because our interpretation was that this did not fall under that definition of a, of a corner lines. No, say that again, what you said at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at, let me just show you no, the no, picture. No, no, what you said about the uh, motion to interpretation. the interpretation. Right, if you look at page 82 of your applicant, of your packet, you'll see that, that corner, that, that, um, what the applicant is asking to be considered a corner lot, their property. If you make the call, you make the interpretation that a corner lot does not have to rely on our strict interpretation where the street, the intersection of two streets has to happen at the curve. We have to write this down. I'm well, writing it. Well, you are okay, <laughs> Then what you're saying is that in this particular case, for example, Preserve Way and Hollow Glen, they intersect further south of, of that curve. They, they intersect somewhere else on that property. And just by fact that they touch, that intersection happens somewhere else along that front of that property. Therefore, that property is considered to be a corner lot. So in other words, your interpretation is saying that we, have to disre we should disregard the location of that intersection that it should, that if it happens, if it occurs or touches any portion of that lot, then it could be considered a corner lot. Okay. Was that clear? That's, uh, that's my understanding of where Ms. Hundley was going with this. And she can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> the corner lot does not have to rely on strict city interpretation of corner if intersection occurs at any point along the lot. Yes. So go one step further. So if that is the case, then their setback would be what? And their fence would be how tall? Just what would we have then? If you interpret it, if that was your interpretation, in this particular case, their setback, they would be considered a corner lot. So their side setback would be 10 feet. And so they would have to maintain that six foot high fence outside of that 10 foot setback. So we got right. So from the front of the lot, it would have to be back 10 foot at all places along and they could have the six foot fence. And is, so as far as affecting this, would you be totally opposed to that or? or? Well, we're, we're, our interpretation still stands until you tell us otherwise. That's a good, uh, the, the fence is not on the uh, property line, it's 10 feet in, so mm -hmm. that's a big plus too. Mm -hmm. so, First line of sight for safety mm -hmm. as far as driving. Yeah, and plus it helps the neighbors next door too, so to the south. And I think it would be. Okay, you wrote it down, right? Yeah. Okay. My, I have a touch screen. I keep trying to touch this. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> that, not good when you're at this point. Okay, let's see. Okay. I make a motion. Wait, wait, is, is there any more discussion before we? No more discussions. All right. You want to make a motion, please. I want to make a motion that the corner lot for 20 for appeal number 0 01 2018, that the corner lot does not have to rely on the city's strict interpretation of corner if the because the intersection occurs at along any point of the lot. That was, something needs to be changed there. Yeah. It says, okay. Uh, we, we are, we, we've been asked to rule on, or is the city's interpretation correct? You're, you're, you're going a step beyond. 
Okay, I so thought I was. We're, I th going, we're going to say that the city's interpretation is wrong, <laughs> and our interpretation is. Is that correct? Yes. So you need to reword it's what I'm trying to say. I don't. It, we we interpreted that. that the, because the, what we're ruling on is the interpretation of city staff's presentation, uh, staff's ruling, correct? So we have to rule either for or against okay. what city. Lori, I think your interpretation you, uh, is what you're trying to say is a corner lot will include an intersection that occurs at any point along the property line. Thank you. You're good. You're right. You do this. Corner lot includes an intersection that occurs at any point along the property line. Okay. This will be unique to this one, too. So. Well, it will be well. unique to this property, but if there is another situation like this, it might be, but we don't know okay. any. It will apply to it, though. Yeah. It will apply to it, yes. Mm -hmm. Until such time that staff possibly rewrites yes. code, which could be six months to a year down the road, right? Yes. Okay. But this would give them some guidance Absolutely. for future writing yeah. code. Okay. Now, the, you, want, the, you want to reword that for me, please? I'm sorry. I, I just didn't like the first motion, so. <laughs> I don't see you right. <laughs> no, okay. I can't make the motion. <laughs> I know. I, you could. <laughs> okay. Um, appeal no, request number 1 2018 is that the corner lot should, includes an intersection that occurs anywhere along the property. I can uh, clarify. I think the intersection of two streets may occur at any point on the property line. Thank you. Is that what he said? Can you is that, that what you said? I make a motion to follow Brad's wording. <laughs> well, I think that, I don't know, you tell me if a member needs to actually repeat that or. I think that the motion is conveyed. Has there been a second? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Is there any further discussion? Everyone understand exactly what the motion is. All right. May we have roll call, please? Member Hunley? Yes. Vice Chairman Shahayam? Yes. Alternate Member Kilpatrick? Yes. Alternate Member Smith Rodriguez? No. Chairman Taylor? Yes. So, in essence, staff has some guidance for future rewrites or whatever of what might happen in the future. Yes, when you get thank to you. It, thank correct? you. The motion right. carries, right? So the motion carried, yes, okay. four to one. But you do have that 10 foot setback now. We have that. Okay, you got that. All right. <laughs> Make sure you tell the fence company. Make sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so that, uh, hmm, now I got to go back to something other. Page 10. Nope, that not work. I don't know. Where, oh, uh, how do I close up? Uh, okay, so that ends our agendas for tonight so we have a meeting set for april i mean uh yeah april 20, 25th 25th at this time <clears throat> so uh staff do you have anything to report to us you uh, will have uh, an appeal at that meeting and potentially another variance as well okay. potentially another variance okay all I right i will not be in attendance at that meeting okay. i'll be out of town okay. all right thank you Councillor, do you have anything to report? Yes, sir. Uh, I personally don't have anything, except we still have one vacancy on this board. If someone in the public wishes to join us. Uh, so what's the qualification uh, to be? We've been, we've read that several times. Just call the call and Miss Chelsea will be gladly uh, inform everybody. Is it it's professional. Is no, it this, this is professional. This is professional. Realtor, architect. No, not no. realtor. Do you like me to go through the list, sir? Please. Yes, go ahead. I'll do it quickly. Um, if you are a licensed architect, a licensed engineer, a licensed landscape architect, a licensed surveyor, a general contractor, a building contractor, a person associated with the building trades industry, is a person having an education degree in urban planning, a person ha with a current American Institute of Certified Planner certification, a person with a minimum of 10 years experience in land development, 
a person with a minimum of 10 years experience in urban planning field, please feel free to submit an application to the city clerk's office. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. And uh, anybody else have anything to add? Uh, I didn't open it up to the public. We don't have any public, so we'll just close it up and say this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.